I'd like to start this video off with a quick apology. I really wanted to be here to steel stud frame this entire container, but unfortunately I was gone for a day and the guys got it done, so I can't fault them for that. But I'm going to give you a very comprehensive tour of all the cool new components that we have to make steel stud framing your shipping container super easy. Stay tuned. I'm Channing McCorriston, the Container Guy. In this video, we are going to show you our Container Modification World door kits, window kits, container door flashing kits. We're also going to showcase our new steel stud bracket and corner casting covers, which again, make your life very easy when you go to frame shipping containers. We'll also show off the different types of hardware that we use in this container. So we have our quarter inch hex head self-tapping screw. We we'll use a number eight a uh, wood screw that connects the bottom track to the wood floor of the container. And then we also have our number eight uh, self-tapping sheet metal screw. And so this connects the studs to both the bottom track and the top track. And then also right here into this uh, steel stud bracket of ours. So in the past, we would typically start by framing the end wall of containers and then work our way towards the container doors. But now that we have this new system with the steel stud brackets and corner casting covers, we'll actually start at the container doors. And so we install our container door flashing kit. This installs on the two sides and top and bottom of the door. This is pretty cool. So you can spray foam uh, the doors and actually remove one of the panels and then finish this with a sheet of plywood, drywall, whatever and then reinstall this after foam and it's a nice finished look and allows the doors to operate uh, just as smooth as, as factory, which is uh, pretty rare for insulated container doors. And then also on the, the sides here, I can show you both sides, we have the wall flashing kit. And so this now has pre-laser cut holes that allow your interior finish to come up to here and then we can screw that in. So we can use a similar screw to this and connect to our sheet of plywood and we have a nice uh, finished galvanized edge and the two come perfectly together and just seal that up so we get it as you know good a vapor barrier as we can while keeping the shipping container doors operational. Uh, another thing to note here as we start steel studding is we are using inch and five eighths steel studs. So this is pretty new to us and this new bracket allows it. So what this bracket does is it defines the height of the ceiling studs and how far out the wall studs uh, protrude. And so this works with either two and a half inch steel stud or inch and five eighths. But we like to use inch and five eighths. The reason why is right here, we have an inside corrugation and we have seven eighths of an inch of gap behind here. So we can get a nice layer of spray foam and then adds as a nice thermal break and stops the thermal bridging from when these studs are touching the inside corrugations. So we'll jump down and show you the track and the hardware that we use. Truck, Ford F-350. So down at the, the bottom of the container, we also try to match how far out that the, uh, the, the track is up at the top, down at the bottom. So we try to keep that same uh, 7 eighths of an inch away from the inside corrugations and then secure this bottom track down with your uh, wood screw. So that just screws right into the wood floor. It's super simple. And so once you install your track on the floor and you got this thing installed up top, so this just hugs the top uh, 60 millimeter tubing and then your self-tapping screw. So the same way that all of our CSM brackets and everything install going into that hollow tubing, that tubing does not penetrate the outside. So you're not poking any holes in your container. You're not ruining your envelope. And it, provides the least amount of thermal bridging as possible just through this one bracket. One thing that we'd love to do if we get this thing completely uh, refined is actually maybe injection mold this out of plastic and then we have absolutely zero thermal bridging in this container along the side walls and end walls. So there'll be basically a steel shell on the outside and then steel framing on the inside, nothing else uh, transferring the cold into your can. So that's super exciting. Uh, once you got your top track and bottom track in, you can just walk by, uh, through one by one and snap in your studs and then use your uh, self-tapping sheet metal screws just to connect them. A lot of times we only connect them on the outside, not the inside. 
Uh, it's because it's pretty much impossible to get in there, and that's fine as long as you're using the, uh, the furring strip. And so this is a stiffener bar. A lot of times this can actually go inside on, on thicker studs. This can go through the, the, the holes, the slots that are in the stud uh, in like two and a half and three and five eighths steel studs. But given this is the narrower one, we just surface mount it. And what this does is when we spray foam, sometimes we've had instances where it'll bow the stud outwards or it'll twist the stud. And so this just locks everything nice on the same plane. So when you go to, to drywall or uh, plywood line the interior of this container, it's gonna look nice and straight. And then this can be removed. I know one person said on a previous video, oh, you should recycle that bar. We do, and that's why all this foam is on here right now. So it's a little bit ugly, but hey, we're uh, saving the planet one chunk of stiffener bar at a time. So that there, you just keep going and you can go on uh, 16 inch centers or 24 inch centers. It really uh, depends on how often you wanna secure your interior wall covering uh, to the studs. And so maybe we'll just uh, jump to the back and show you how our corner casting covers work. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the installation of the window kits or the man door because we have full comprehensive installation videos on that. So make sure you check out our channel. And yeah, there's tons of other videos to show you all different types of mods and accessories there. But I'll just give you the interior view of the fenestrations and then how we've steel studded around them. So these window kits, we love them because it's all just laser cut and folded sheet metal. So there's no hollow section there and the spray foam can come all the way around and touch the vinyl window. So we get a perfect vapor barrier. And that's uh, also very important using these steel stud brackets and the inch and five eight steel studs. Is there's also that same gap behind the steel studs. The foam's actually gonna come right around and touch this. We won't even need to uh, come back in with a can of spray foam and touch this up because the the closed cell spray foam is going to do it. So you don't have to worry about open cell and the closed cell is an even better vapor barrier. So super happy about that. Uh, when you get to the end wall, included with the steel stud bracket kits are going to be corner casting covers and that's up high. And so these covers here will uh, allow you to have a, a solid two inches of spray foam all around the corner casting and still allow you to uh, have all of your interior trim come up to those flanges and connect in a secure manner. And then on the inside corner, in order to finish this, after it's spray foamed, we can come down from the corner casting cover with an angle iron and then that gives us a drywall return on the inside. But we're gonna do that after spray foam so that it's not uh, another annoying thing in the spray foamer's way to get around and it's super easy to install afterwards. So that will do after. Uh, but yeah, just as far as working with steel studs, a lot of people are scared to do them because they've never done them before, but just I challenge you to give them a try. It's kind of like working with siding or soffit and fascia where it's tin bashing. So when you come up to an end, you leave yourself a little flange and now you have something to, to secure to and you can bend another return flange upwards. So you have nice, neat corners and no spray foam getting in there. So it's, yeah, it's, it's very similar to working with other uh, light gauge steel products. And once you've done it once, then you have experience and then you're good at it. So I challenge everyone to try steel studs because it's non-porous, it doesn't wick any moisture and it's not gonna cause health concerns in the future like wood will. If you use two by fours in here, wherever it's touching the inside corrugations, it's gonna wick moisture, it's gonna eventually rot and mold, and then you do all this work to the steel envelope, and then you ruin it by having the interior mold out prior to the end of the useful life of the shipping container. So I totally hate wood inside of sea cans. Please give it a try, use steel studs. You will not regret it, and your container's gonna last 100 years rather than 10. Prior to having your spray foamers actually insulate this thing, one thing that's very important is making sure your container is nice and level. So you can see here with this container door flashing kit, uh, notice the screws. These should be perfectly level across these hex head screws that are inside there, and they're not, which means this container is not level and one door is higher than the other. You can also, if you look up here, you can see the top of the door flashing kit is a lot closer to the wall flashing kit on the right door than it is the left door. So that's telling me that this container is not level. Now, what that can do is, if you spray foam it somewhere in your yard where it's not its final resting place, 
and have it locked in and then go to lift the thing afterwards. We've has, had instances where the foam pops and it splits. And so now you have this crack in your foam, which is just gonna frost and leak and just totally uh, ruin the sealed envelope uh, that the two pound closed cell spray foam provides you. So make sure you don't do that. Now let's check out our man door. And just finally with this uh, container modification world, uh, man door, it works very well as well, not having a hollow tube frame so we can spray foam right up to the door frame and get as good of an insulation value as we can out of any commercial door out there. And then it still provides you this, uh, this finished steel stud to trim back up to the, the automotive style door seal that comes with these. Another thing to note is uh, we've tuck taped over top of all of the electrical holes around the doors and the windows and that just stops spray foam from flying through. Another thing that I'm gonna get my guys to do prior is maybe take some stucco tape, that red vinyl tape that doesn't leave any residue and we might tape here just so that foam doesn't come flying through and land on, it's crazy stuff. It'll spin around corners, it'll do whatever. So it'll stain the door and then once it lands on something, it leaves you know, a weird residue and stain. So as much as we can stop the overspray, lay poly down prior to form, foaming just to protect anything that uh, isn't gonna be finished after spray foam. Make sure you do that. So that right there is a quick rundown on how to steel stud frame shipping containers. If you found value from this video, please help us out and give the video a like, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for notifications. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.